Good morning. This morning, we are starting a new series of messages on spiritual growth. If a child doesn't grow up, that is a tragedy. And if a Christian doesn't grow to spiritual maturity, that is a tragedy too. Our scripture passage this morning makes it clear that God's design is that we grow and mature spiritually in every area of our life and in every way that we can. As we look at this very profound and personal issue, please open up your Bibles, pull out your message outlines, and follow along as I begin reading Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. I've been revisited by the bug. I had it a few weeks ago. It showed up again last Saturday, a week ago yesterday, and I'm still fighting it a little bit, so... <clears throat> Bear with me if I have to go get a little, more, a little bit more coffee along the way. The previous series of messages that we just completed was really on spiritual disciplines. Now, I didn't tell you they were spiritual disciplines because for some of us that doesn't conjure up a very good picture. When I hear spiritual and discipline, that takes me back to being paddled in Mother Superior's office. I, I was, truly. And if you're a little rebellious, the idea of discipline, ah, you don't want any of that. But I think the way we presented the spiritual disciplines, we we're able to see the great benefit that they are in our life. The spiritual disciplines are, uh, are what we're to do, and this series of messages about spiritual growth is how we are to do them. The context in which we practice those spiritual disciplines. What is the context? Simply the context for our spiritual disciplines is our spiritual growth, our spiritual maturity. And the Bible has a, a few very insightful things to say about spiritual growth and spiritual maturity. The first is, is that you really were designed by God to grow spiritually. It's our scripture passage. This is the Phillips translation of verse 24. We are not meant to remain as children at the mercy of every chance wind of teaching, but we are meant to hold firmly to the truth and love and to grow up in every way. Notice it says every way, not just some ways, not just the easy ways, in every way. Every way in Christ who is the head. God designed you to be in relationship with you, and that relationship is one of growth, one of maturity. It's not only about knowing more, it's about experiencing more. It's not just about experiencing more, it's, it's about sharing more and doing more. 
And that's God's design for you. God wants to get you ready for heaven. And I know you don't want to go there any quicker than you have to. But this life is really the training ground for eternity. And spiritual growth and spiritual disciplines are what move us forward in preparation. That's what equips us for spending eternity with God. Now, you may not know this, but I am responsible for your spiritual growth. The Bible makes that clear. 1 Peter 5.2. Here, Peter used shepherds, but it's the same word as pastors. Shepherds nurture, guard, and guide the flock of God that He has entrusted to your responsibility. God has entrusted you to me. In fact, the Bible makes it very clear that when I get to heaven, He's not only going to talk with me about what I did with what He gave me, but He's also going to question me, hold me accountable for what you did with what God gave you. That's right. And when I get there, some of you are going to hold me up a long time. I'm going to have some explaining to do. Right? And I want that to be a very short conversation. Right? I'm like you. I just want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And for that to happen, I have a responsibility to encourage you and to lead you, to pastor you towards spiritual growth and maturity. We're not supposed to be like little kids any longer. We're supposed to grow up into our faith. And you're all aging, I can see that from here. Because you don't have a choice about that, but maturity is really a choice, isn't it? It's my responsibility. Spiritual, your spiritual maturity It's God's goal for you, and it's my goal for you. I want you to grow spiritually. Colossians 1, eh, 28, 26. It's one of those. I'm taking Sudafed, so I don't see everything just right right now. I feel better, but... We continue to preach Christ to each person using all wisdom to warn and to teach everyone in order to bring each one into God's presence as a what? Mature person in Christ. That's the goal. That's the goal. Now, we have a few myths about spiritual maturity and spiritual growth. It's not automatic. It's not instant. It doesn't happen by just showing up in church on Sunday morning. It doesn't happen all on your own. You need a few other people around you, a few other Christians around you to really mature. What are the, the dynamics, the spiritual dynamics, the practical dynamics of spiritual growth? I, I think the Bible points out five. Number one is, is it really and truly is about uh, your intentionality, your choice. I love what Rick Warren says. It just jumped off the page when I read it. He says, you're as close to God, you're as close to Jesus Christ as you choose to be. Wow. I thought God was sovereign. I thought God was doing all the work. Ah, but he will not supersede your choice, your free will. He can't make you grow because if he could, he would. Because he knows that's the best thing for you. And so we must choose, we must be intentional about choosing to grow spiritually. It is a personal commitment that we need to make. Look at Colossians 2, 6 and 7. 
just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, now, I call that jumping the hoop, crossing the line. We don't have Jesus Christ as the leader of our life, and then we choose, we decide that we're going to be committed to Christ and we're going to let Him be the leader of our life. That is not the end of what it means to be a Christian. That's just the beginning of what it means to be a Christian, to be a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ. It's a little bit like a marriage. You know, people come here and they have me uh, witness their vows to one another. And I, I do pronounce them husband and wife, but you know, they're not really married yet, are they? All they've really, all I've really done is given them now permission to go and make a marriage. And you need that decisive commitment, yes. But that's not the end of marriage, that's just the beginning of marriage. The same thing is true spiritually. We must continue to love in obedience to Him. There's that word we don't like, obedience. But you'll notice I mentioned that a few times in the last series. Let your roots grow down into Him so that you can draw nourishment from Him. And the illustration there is really a tree. A tree must have roots for it to properly do what trees are supposed to do. I learned that in my, when I had my first garden. Uh, I, I had a trigraft apple tree. Pretty good endeavor for a city boy, right? And my trigraft tree looked beautiful, but it was not bearing fruit. So I called a friend of mine, Boone, who understood trees and how they grow and I brought him over and I said this one right here it's not doing its thing I want apples I'm not getting any apples and he looked at it for a moment and he said get me a ladder I got him a ladder and as you might imagine he had his pruning shears on his belt <sighs> got those those shears out and he started just cutting everything he could see. And I thought for a moment, Boone, you have no idea what you're doing. You're going to wreck, wreck my tree. You're going to kill it. But I wisely shut up and kept my inexperienced opinion to myself. And when he finished, I said, okay, why'd you cut all those branches off? I mean, he turned this beautiful tree into a little hedge, a little ball. And he said, here's your problem. He says, the roots of the tree have not grown far enough down into the dirt. And because the root system is not deep or complex yet, all the nourishment that's coming up through the roots, it's all being used to make limbs and leaves. There's not enough energy left over to make the fruit. So I've trimmed it so that the roots grow down deep. Next season, I had apples, three different, three different kinds of apples. Ah, all because it got pruned. If we want to grow spiritually, if we want to bear fruit, and that's what the Bible calls doing the good things that you can and should do, You've got to be committed. What happens to a plant, and now I want to talk to the shoppers and the hoppers who are here today. Uh, and if, you're, if it's your first time or you've been coming, God bless you. That's a good thing for you to come and check it all out. But at some point, you have to stop shopping and hopping. Because if you keep shopping and hopping all the time, it's like your plant's being transplanted over and over again. And what happens every time you have to transplant a plant? Part of the root system is destroyed. And you know what happens when you transplant a plant? After you transplant it, it kind of goes through this ugly stage. 
right? You don't want to go through that ugly stage more often than you need to, right? So it's not only a personal commitment, but the intentionality to grow spiritually is a commitment to the church. The commitment to other Christians who as well want to grow and mature. And again, the Bible is very clear about that. Why do we need each other? Each part does its special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy, growing, and full of love. Now let's work that backwards for just a minute. What Paul is doing is describing what a church ought to be. It ought to be healthy, it ought to be growing, and it ought to be full of love. So I use that as some indicators as a pastor. Are we full of love as a church? Are we marked by loving relationships with one another? Are we, are we a, a, a growing church? And we ought to grow in quantity and quality. One doesn't compete with the other in a church. People ought to be deepening and maturing in their faith and there ought to be a few new people showing up. Hopefully some people that don't know whether the, the, the spiritual ball is pumped or stuffed. They don't know much of anything. That's great. Where are they going to learn about Jesus Christ? Out there? No. Not out there. They're going to learn about Jesus Christ here. They're going to learn about the truth of the Bible here. They're going to discover and experience God's love here. That's why we need to link and invite people here. Are we a healthy church? Do we have healthy relationships with one another? That doesn't mean we're always going to get along with everybody all the time. But there are healthy ways to be with one another. A sense of independence and a sense of dependence. It's called interdependency. And a healthy church should have some interdependency. We can't grow all on our own. We're more like redwood trees than we are like a lone pine. And redwood trees have to grow with one another. They intertwine the root system. And a tree way over there feeds the tree way over there. And then when the, the heavy winds come, the lone pine gets knocked down because it's all alone, but the redwoods, what? Stand. In fact, they become stronger in the wind because of the force against them. It builds strength like weightlifting. The whole body is healthy, growing, and full of love. Number two, growth is incremental. Uh, it, it doesn't happen all at once. Uh, there isn't a, a, you know, a, a way for you to grow and mature all at one time. And so we need some plans and some goals when it comes to our spiritual growth. And I, I believe you're never done with setting new goals and, and having a new action plan for spiritual growth in your life. We, as a, a staff, went to Saddleback down in Southern California a couple of weeks ago as a, uh, to a pastor's staff conference. And while I was there, you know, I wasn't on automatic. I was taking all of it in, and actually I was exhausted after that week. Wrestling with everything intellectually, emotionally, spiritually. Man, I was so full. I was, <laughs> I was just fried after that week. And while I was there, the Holy Spirit kind of tapped me on the shoulder and said, Scott, this is what I want you to do next. Here, here are a couple of goals I want you to enact in your life. And so as I've returned, I've enacted those goals in my life. I've changed a few things. I've added a couple of things uh, to my spiritual disciplines. If I'm not growing, you're not going to grow. I can tell you that. This will be a, if I stop growing, it'll be an awful Sunday morning listening to me. 
And you might think, well, you're the pastor. You should be mature and you should have it all together. I'm a Christian just like you. And I need to grow. I need to mature. Aging is not an option. Maturing is a choice. It happens incrementally. It doesn't happen all, uh, all at once. That's, what does the Bible say? 2 Corinthians 5, 9. We make it our goal to please Him. And I'll just simply ask you, do you have some goals about pleasing God? Now, here's an interesting thought. The week is coming up. I can virtually guarantee that everyone in the room has some plans and some goals to please yourself. I, I do. And it's not that you're not allowed to have some goals to please yourself, but I'd ask you, do you have any goals for pleasing God in the week ahead? Do you really have some plans after this morning of what you're going to do to really please God? Put a smile on His face. Our goal is to measure up to God's plan for us. Notice it doesn't say measure up to my plans for me, my spouse's plans for me, somebody else's plans for me. Our goal is to measure up to God's plan. God's plan. Are we measuring up to God's plan? The class system Christian leadership and service seminars are designed to help you with incremental spiritual growth. 101 really builds, 201 builds on 101, 301 on 201, 401 on 301. You start by being committed to Christ and committed to one another, the church. Then you develop spiritual habits. You learn your unique uh, shape for ministry. Then you learn about your mission as close as across the street and as far as the other side of the world. We've added 501 because you need to learn how to deal with your money. And the more you have, the more responsibility you have, the Bible says. And so we've added 501 recently so that we can understand biblical principles of money management. Biblical principles of money management. And if you go through all five of those, there's a little guarantee that, that you've equipped yourself, that you've got yourself moving forward in spiritual growth. It's, it's, not, a, it, it's not an ultimate guarantee, but I have some idea of quality control when you've been to all five of those. Why? Because it's incremental growth. In the, in the right direction, in the, in the very best direction. Spiritual maturity and growth is personal. One size does not fit all. And the reason for that is we all have different, uh, you know, uh, different things that we're good at. Let me explain it to you this way. You have a handout that I give you on Sunday mornings. Why, have you ever thought about why I do that? It's actually very difficult to be a speaker and give you ahead of time everything I'm supposed to say. Because you know when I miss something, mispronounce something, because you, you, have, you have it right in front of you, right? The reason why I give you an outline of what I'm doing is I want you to learn why you're here. Some people learn auditorily through the year. And I could just talk for them and they get it and they leave and they can remember it in a couple of days. Some of us are visual people. We have to see it. So I want to give it to you so that you can see it. And that helps you remember. Some of us are kinesthetic learners, which means we, we learn by doing. And that's why I give you a few blanks to fill in. I give you a few blanks to fill in because some people learn best when they're taking notes, when they're physically doing something, right? The other thing that's true educationally is if you multiply the channels of learning, you'll remember more and you'll remember it for a longer period of time. Our spiritual growth is as individual as we are. 
And again, the, the Bible makes that pretty clear. Job says, your hands have formed and shaped me. Everybody's shape is a little bit different, both physically and spiritually. Some have been, uh, God has given each of you some special abilities, and you need to know what your special abilities are. You need to know what your spiritual gift is. What is your spiritual gift? What are your special abilities that God has given you to contribute to the whole? You are irreplaceable in the body of Christ. Without your commitment and your participation, the rest of us are missing out. We're missing out. Personal, it's practical. Spiritual growth is teaches you uh, good habits. There's not a, a thing in the Bible that will give you a bad habit. Right? Everything the Bible tells you to do, it's good for you. Those spiritual disciplines are good for you. We're all looking for more meaning and purpose in life, aren't we? We're looking for stability and security when difficulty comes our way. We want a, a clear conscience. We want to be uh, in a, a healthy relationship with other people. That's all here in the Bible. If my job is your spiritual growth, I want you to know the Bible makes it easy for me. All I need to do is read it and come to you and say, hey, here's what the Bible has to say. And I know you're practically going to walk away with something that you can enact in your life right away. Some of the stuff I tell you you need to enact before you even get to the car. God wants to equip us in a very practical way. Look at 2 Timothy 3.17. God uses it, the Bible, to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. Is there anyone here that wants to miss out on the good work that God has in store for them in the week ahead? Anybody want to miss out on it? Nobody does. Everybody wants to enjoy the blessing of God, and I think most people want to share that blessing with those around them. If we don't grow spiritually, if we don't mature, we're going to miss out on some of the good things that God intends for us practical things that we need, especially when our world gets turned upside down. And finally, spiritual growth is relational. <laughs> I love uh, Hebrews. It's a great, a great book. Listen to what uh, Paul says. Let us be concerned for one another, help one another to show love and good deeds. Let let us not give up the habit of meeting together because we ran into a few crabby people when we showed up once. Let me tell you this. This church is not perfect. Right? Shh, don't tell anyone, but you're not perfect. If you want the perfect church and you find it and you join it, it won't be perfect anymore. <laughs> Good, healthy, loving. You notice it doesn't say perfect. You've heard me say this before. Christian maturity happens best in small groups. Not in large groups. I, I'm not kidding myself about what goes on on a Sunday morning. You're like in a bus, and I'm your spiritual tour guide. Right? And you're intellectually learning some good practical things. But you know, there's a time on a tour where you take your tour book in hand and you get off the bus and you discover it for yourself. 
And we need to be discovering our Christian faith for ourselves. As I call it, we need to get our hands dirty ourselves. And I know you're not doing that on Sunday morning, not completely, not fully, only in part. We must be committed to one another to encourage one another in faith and good works. To be a good, healthy, loving church. That's about commitment to one another. And we need to be in a smaller group, a small group, a ministry team, a Bible study, where we can be known and get to know other people. Where we can take the unique shape that God has given us and use that for His glory and the benefit of someone else. (laughs) And I can tell you that's not happening by warming a pew on Sunday morning. It is not, don't misunderstand me, it's not a bad place to start. But there is so much more to enjoy in your faith that if Sunday morning's the only time you're plugging in, you're missing out. You're missing out. God's design, my desire, is that each of you grow to maturity. That you're able to put down roots and the fruit that you display as a Christian would stand out in the community that we live in. Because when you demonstrate your fruit that the Holy Spirit is bringing to your life, away from this building, other people are attracted to Jesus Christ. And it is all about eternity, as I mentioned the other week. God's design, my desire, is that you don't just get older in front of me, but that you would truly grow and mature in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, you know what the next step is for us in spiritual commitment to you, and and I pray that we can take that step this morning through the encouragement and the empowerment of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we often see some obstacles when it comes to spiritual growth, and Lord, help us to to put that obstacle in perspective and see it for the small thing that it is, that it should not keep me from moving forward It should not keep me from being equipped for every good thing. It shouldn't keep me from taking my place in the church. It shouldn't keep me from building other people up in love. For Lord, our desire is to be your church. You're the head. And we want to grow up in you. Lord, thank you for calling us to a deeper commitment, a deeper relationship with you. Lord, once again, we're thankful for the reminder that you do love us and you do have a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. Amen.